All right, hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is your first time joining. This is The Coding Zoo and my name is Shane. Our goal at The Coding Zoo is to help others like yourself learn how to program. In today's video, we're gonna cover the Apache Maven build automation tool. So, what is Apache Maven? Apache Maven is a build automation tool used primarily for Java projects. It can also be used for languages such as Scala or C Sharp, et cetera. So way back in the day, in the dark ages, and I can say that I was there, it was painful, we didn't have Maven. We had to build our Java projects, deployment using Ant scripts. And we also had to bring in project dependencies, jar libraries, had to bring them in manually. It was not fun. Well, Maven was created to tackle that problem. It is responsible for bringing in all of your project dependencies. You tell it what dependencies you want, it will go out to a central Maven repository and pull those dependency jars down for you. It's also responsible for building your project into a deployment jar or war. You no longer have to use Ant scripts for that. You could also store your own jar in a central Maven repository for others to download and use with their projects. Pretty neat stuff. Maven also helps to create the directory structure of your project, the overall layout of your project, including folders, source folders, and modules. It's very helpful. Well, that's enough talking about it. It would probably be easier to show you than to talk about it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go download it and install it, and we'll create our first Maven project together. I'll show you how it works. It's quick, simple, and easy. Let's jump right in. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and download Apache Maven. So I'm gonna bring up Google here. We're gonna search for Apache Maven. Now you'll see there's a mavenapache.org. I'm gonna click and go to download. And I'm gonna go down to where it says files here. Let's see, I wanna get the zip one. Apache 3.86 bin zip. We're gonna download that. All right, I believe it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and, and click on this little arrow to show and folder. That's gonna open up File Explorer. All right, so here's the file I downloaded. I'm gonna right click, choose copy. and I'm gonna put it over to my another folder on my D drive. You can put the file wherever you like, just wherever you want to install it. I'm gonna call it Maven. So I created a folder called Maven. I did that by right clicking, choosing new, choosing folder, and then I named it Maven. Go inside that folder, I'm gonna press Control V to paste. All right, so now I have the download in this Maven folder. I am going to right click on it, choose extract all, it's gonna create a folder inside of that folder. There we go, it's done with that. So now I have this folder that has Maven inside of it. So this is not like a typical Windows install, right? This is, uh, this is it, it's, it's installed pretty much. So we have to actually tell Windows where this is at, okay? So let's do that. Now you've noticed I've gone down to the Apache Maven 3.86 and I've gone to the bin folder. I'm gonna copy this path. So highlight it, control C, and now I'm gonna to go to my Windows system edit. I'm basically gonna add this to my Windows system path. I wanna tell Windows where this folder is at. That way it can find this Maven binary file. So now I'm gonna go down to my Windows menu here, click on the start. I'm gonna start typing to do a search. All right, so I'm gonna type in edit system. And you'll notice it found the edit the system environment variables for control panel. I'm gonna click on that, and that brings up the system properties. Now this is where we wanna to go to. Now there's different ways to get to here if that doesn't work for you. You can, for you, you can click on the Windows icon. You can type in control for control panel. Click on control panel. Inside a control panel, you can go to system. There's probably shorter ways, but this is one way. So inside of system here, you're gonna see over here, advanced system settings. I click on that. And again, we have the system properties. So I'm gonna go into the system properties here. I'm gonna choose this button, environment variables. So this is where you can set variables up to tell Windows where certain things are at. I'm gonna go down here to system variables. And I'm gonna go down to, I wanna add a variable to the path. I wanna add an entry to the path variable. Now you'll notice, so you'll notice there's a path variable already defined. So I don't want to do a new variable. I want to edit this one. So I'm gonna choose edit. 
and I want to choose new. Now, if you remember, I cut and pasted the path to where I put the Maven binary files. So I'm going to do control V to paste it. You'll see it's D Maven, patchy Maven, patchy Maven, backslash bin. There we go. So I'm going to choose OK. I'm going to edit it again to make sure it's stuck. Make sure it's there. There it is at the bottom. Choose OK. Choose OK. Choose OK. I'm going to close these other windows down. OK. Next, I'm going to open up the start menu again. I'm going to type in command. And the command prompt option will come up. I'll click on that. Now, what we did is we added that binary path, the bin folder path to the Windows path variable, the environment variable. And what that allows us to do is that allows us to access the Maven from pretty much anywhere in, win in Windows. If it's working correctly, I should be able to access it here. So I'm going to type in MVN for Maven. I'm going to type in space dash version. And if it worked, we had it set up correctly, you'll see this. So there we go. Maven is installed. I have Maven on my system, on my D drive, and Windows knows about it. Again, MVN dash version, that's your test. Maven is installed. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my IntelliJ. I have the community edition here. All right, so I'm gonna choose new project. Now this new project, I'm gonna choose my JDK and fill out the name. So I'm going to choose, I'm not going to use 17. I've been having issues for 17 today. I'm going to switch to 1.8 for now. So I'm going to choose JDK 1.8. So it'll give you the options for whatever you have installed on your system. You can also download JDK also if you don't have one installed already. So I have 1.8. I'm going to call this Maven Project 1. This is my first Maven project in IntelliJ. I'm going to use this. I'm going to leave the catalog to internal. Now I'm going to choose that archetype. Now remember, archetype is like that template. What template do you want to use to create your first project? You could use a spring template. It brings in a bunch of spring libraries. Or you can use just the default one or the, the more, more common one, which I prefer, which is Quick Start. Now it will create your basic common Maven project structure. It's a pretty neat one. So I'm going to add that there. There we go. Now you'll notice in this wizard, you have the items on the left here. I forgot to mention, it automatically selected Maven archetype for me. If you don't, if you don't see this menu, you need to select that first, Maven archetype. So I've got all this filled out, Maven project one. I'm pointing to my D Java projects folder. That's where I wanted to create the project. Specified my JDK, specified which template I wanted to use. Let's choose create. All right, now it's creating my project. You can see it doing stuff down here. It's trying to build it. Please build correctly. Build success. It's asking, do I want to exclude these directories from Windows to Fender? Yeah, I do. I want to exclude them. I don't want Defender messing with my development folder. All right, so it created my Maven Project 1. Pretty cool. Now you'll notice his, this is the project structure. Let's go over that real quick. First, we have a source folder and we have a POM file. Now your source folder is going to have a, this particular type of structure. This is your common Maven project structure. There's a main and there's a test. So your main folder is where your code goes for your production deployment, for your main code. You'll notice there's a Java source folder here called Java. Inside of that is your package structure. Your package structure. This is org.example. That's my package. And this is my first Java class in this project. It put one here as an example. Very cool. You can rename this package to whatever you want it to call it. And you can, of course, add as many classes as you want. Now, next, you're going to see outside of main, we have test. Now, this is really cool, too. It set up a test folder. It set up a Java source directory in that test folder and set up a package to match the main package in this test directory, org.example. And this is your first JUnit test, which is used to test this first Java class. So it set up those examples for you. Put your main Java code in main, put your JUnit test in test. Pretty neat. Get used to that structure. You're going to see it a lot when you, you'll see it a lot when you work in different businesses, different companies. All right. Now next, this is the core piece of Maven. It's called the POM file. 
POM.XML. If I open this up, this is where everything is defined. This is what tells Maven what to do. You'll see my group ID, my project ID, the version of this. If I want to change the version of what's built, I can change the version number there. You can see I'm packaging this up as a jar. So instead of using ant to do this, Maven's going to create the jar for me. If I go down, you can put properties here, little variables to represent stuff like version numbers and all that. If I wanted to, I could put this version number for JUnit as a property up here. That way, it's easy for me to find it and change it. So you'll see here, I've got a list of dependencies. This is the magic. This is Maven telling my project that this is me telling Maven, here's the dependencies I want for this project. Maven will go grab them for me and download them and install them. The only product one I have now is JUnit. Now, if I click on external libraries over here, you're going to see the libraries I have associated with this project. What do you see? The Java 1.8 and the JUnit. It pulled it in automatically for me. It downloaded it for, for, for me from the web. Pretty cool. Now, what if I want to add my own libraries? Well, let's say I wanted to add the library called Lombok. I love Lombok, Project Lombok. If you've never used it before, it's a great library. It's an awesome library. Well, how would I do that? Well, I'd have to tell Maven to go grab it for me. How would I do that? I'm going to go over here to Google. I'm going to type in Project Lombok. That's the library I know about. And I'll type in Maven. So Maven Project Lombok. So if I go here, there we go. It's going to give me the dependency item I need to install it. I can use that right there. You can also notice, if you go back to Google, you'll see this mavenrepository.com. Now this is a very popular one. If you go here, you'll see all the versions of Lombok. You click on whatever version you want, and you can get the dependency item for that version right there. Pretty neat. All right, once you have this dependency element from the web, I'm going to go here and type it into IntelliJ. I'm going to paste it into IntelliJ, so Control-V. And I've added the Project Lombok library. So I'm now telling Maven to install the Lombok library so I can use it in my code. All right, well, now what do I do? Well, just go to build, and Maven should grab it automatically for me. Let's see if it does it. It's building, it's building. Oh, I saw something change. What happened? Did it build? Come on. Build success. Did my libraries. It build successfully. It actually created a target folder here. That's cool. It built out my item here and created a target folder. Pretty cool. Did it bring in that library? I don't see that library over here. Maybe it needs a refresh. I'm going to click up here. Going to click on build, build project. Let's see if it'll update that real quick. Sometimes IntelliJ can be a little bit of a pain, but it won't automatically update there. Did it do it? Still didn't do it. All right, watch this. I'm going to go to POM file. And this is a problem with IntelliJ. It's not a problem with Maven, but a problem with IntelliJ. I'm going to go to right-click on it, choose Maven, and I'm going to choose Reload the Project. All right, there we go. Now you'll see that IntelliJ is now caught up to Maven, and you'll see that it has the Project Lombok binary jar inside of IntelliJ. So I have the JUnit dependency, and I have the Lombok dependency automatically added to my project. Pretty cool. Pretty neat stuff. Now, as you're using Maven with IntelliJ or Eclipse, you want to kind of get used to working with this POM file. You want to know about those little tricks right there where you go down to Maven and reload project. Sometimes you have to do that. All right, so that's one way to build it using IntelliJ. Now, I can also build my Maven project using the command line. How would I do that? Well, there's one more thing I want to add to my POM file here. I need to specify a Java version. So I'm going to cut and paste from my little cheat sheet here. Now, what I've done is I've defined a build element in my POM file. And in my build element, I'm saying, hey, I want to use some build plugins. And the plugin I want to use is this Maven compiler plugin. I'm configuring that plugin to use the source code of Java 1.8 and the target and build 1.8 compiled code, right? So this is what I'm adding to my POM file. 
And that way I can build it outside of IntelliJ. So build, plugins, plugin, specify this entry here. And let's give that a shot. So I've got this in my POM file. IntelliJ will automatically save it, or you can press Control S to save it. Now with this entry added, I've got a complete Maven POM file. I should be able to build it outside of IntelliJ or from the command line. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to go to Terminal, which is the command line inside of IntelliJ. I'm going to do Maven clean install. Now it should build it just fine. So let's try it out. Maven clean install. It's building it. And build success. No problems. Awesome. So that worked. Let's try it from another perspective, from a different place. So I'm going to go to the regular command line. I am going to go to that folder. What did I call that folder? CD Maven Project 1. All right. So I'm in my project folder. I'm going to do Maven Clean Install. So this should build it. I'm outside of IntelliJ. It should build it just using Maven. Build success. We are done. It built my project. So that's awesome. Now, if I go back to IntelliJ, go to my target folder, because I did the Maven clean install, you're going to see it actually built the actual jar. This is the jar I would deploy to production, right? You notice the 1.0 snapshot. That's my version number. If you go to the top of my Maven POM file here, you'll see it's called 1.0 snapshot, right? If I were to change that to 1.0-1, go back to here, Maven clean and install, or I could do like a Maven compile. I think the install is what would build the jar. Install builds the jar. Go back over to here. You'll notice it changed to 1.0-1 jar to equal my version. All right, there you go. I'm using Maven inside of IntelliJ and outside of IntelliJ to build my Java project, to build my deployment jar. Pretty neat. And it's pulling my dependencies from out, outside on the internet. Very neat. So key things to remember, this is your POM file. You can use properties here. You add your dependencies as a dependency item here. You can find different dependencies on the web. And you want to add your your plugin for your build to specify which Java version you're using. That way it'll work fine outside of IntelliJ, not just with IntelliJ. That's it. I am now using my Maven to build my projects. Very cool. All right, so that is Apache Maven. Pretty simple stuff, pretty easy to use. Very, very powerful. Let me tell you, if you were working back in the day where we had to just use ants and we had to manage these jars manually, oh, Man, it was not fun. Maven made our life a whole lot easier. So I really love Maven. All right. So hopefully that made a lot of sense to you. If you have any questions, leave me a message below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't seen any of our other instructional videos, hey, I'll put a couple of videos at the end of this video. Be sure to check them out. I'll send you over to the Java playlist and you can look at other instructional videos that we have on the channel. I think you'll enjoy them. Hey. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.